Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 101. It was a really exciting week last week with hitting the number 100 but this week is just back to usual really. Uh, I've had a, as always, busy week. I'm actually working right now as I um, record this. Um, it's uh, late on Saturday night, working on Tawny. Uh, today, first day that the fire's been lit, so winter is coming. And uh, I've been doing some seasonal stuff this month, this week, uh, working on the challenge for TCU and a few other bits and pieces. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if you do. I always love to read those comments. They really inspire me, and I've had some wonderful ones recently, some that brought tears to my eyes. So thank you so much. You know who you are. Um, and uh, yeah, don't be shy. If you haven't commented yet, please introduce yourself, say hi, let me know what you think. Otherwise, Enjoy the video and I'll see you again at the end. So my road template is gluing up and drying up so I can make the extra roads. Um, and what this now uh, comes down to is splitting of the two, which is going to be good fun. So you can see here, these are the miniatures that I've been painting up over the past little while. Um, what we have is a bunch of dead people. I've got a few more downstairs that aren't quite finished, but these I've been painting up in my 20 minutes. They're so really, really cool. Um, and I've got the monsters. <laughs> so the big kind of pumpkin monster and his little minions. So the split is going to be, I'm going to be basing these up. So um, he's going to go on a big base um, and I've got these already on small bases. Um, and then I'm going to be taking, so that's going to be one thing. And then I'm going to be taking this side, which is a cool pumpkin area, which I painted up mostly ages ago and then just kind of stopped. Um, and I've finished that off now, which is going to be really nice. And then the dead kind of like the, um, the, the, the corpses. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a couple of sections of road which will have corpses on either side and maybe in the road so that will take a few of these and I might print some more off I might need some more um, uh, but what I'm going to do for the display piece which is going to be where these four will be able to sit on my shelf and look good um, is I'm going to build something around this so there's going to be the pumpkin patch will be at the back the road will go along in front and I might do like a stand of trees or something like that. So I'll do something quite simple in a sense, but it's going to be a really nice display um, and it'll be, it'll be somewhere where these can sit. Um, I won't put holes in it because I want it to be terrain usable as well. So it's not going to be just a... Uh like a, a display piece where you've got holes where you sit your miniatures into it, um, but it will be um, uh, it will be able to uh, have they have a space where these can sit when it's on the shelf. Now uh, I'm going to fit it so that it's going to be the same depth as my normal display shelves, so about I think it's about 30 centimeters. Um, so it'll be a relatively large piece, maybe 25 centimeters, and it might even be able to still have the crossroads idea that I initially had. But I think. Having found this, and I found this last night, it was it was like a, whoa, okay, I forgot I had that. I think that's a really nice thing to have as a central uh, piece for the display and for the board. So it might end up being just a road going across or maybe a curve or something. We'll see. So I'm going to start drawing that up. I'm going to start working on the bases, and I'll bring you along for both of those. And we're going to crack on with this and get this done. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really energised. I'm really pleased that I've got started on this. And I really, really like these... Um, these corpses that I've managed to print, they've, they've really painted up very nicely. So the challenge here is to make something out of a um, out of an old 3D printed um, supports. Now the f the funny thing is is this is actually um, going to be entered into a contest. Um, which is being run by uh, Joe, who runs the Encounter Terrain, one that I do enjoy so much and do every month. Um, the funny thing is, is that I'd actually saved this, which came from, I think, one of the prints uh, from the spaceship that I'm looking at putting together. I saved this anyway because it inspired me so much when I saw it. And then a couple of days ago, he announced that during the month of uh, October, he, he is going to be running a contest based on making use of an old 3D printed um, sprues or supports or whatever. So I had this sat, I've had this sat in the sun for about three or four weeks just on the back of the windowsill, um, just waiting for time. And so now I've got the inspiration to do it. Um, and it looks, I mean, I, I, my inspiration was that it was um, uh, basically like a, a ruin or something. So this is um, steel girders and something has come in and smashed into it. And yesterday when I was kind of digging through some parts and pieces and bits and pieces, I came across this. So this, um, I think, must have come from the school. Um, I live in an old school renovating it. I think I must have found this. It's an old valve, um, and it's been in a box. I've been looking at it going, oh, I could probably do something pretty cool with that. And now I'm going to. So my idea is I'm going to mount this onto a base, paint it up, make it look like it's a kind of um, post-apocalyptic, derelict, whatever. And then I'm going to have this 
inside it like that so this is what's caused that derelict or that the, this thing to explode um, and I'm going to put smoke and what have you coming out of it so it's going to be a really really simple build in a sense so I'm just going to be making use of this and um, this kind of base and this um, old valve and I'm not actually going to do anything to the valve I think it looks great without anything I mean it looks brilliant um, and it's just going to be embedded in like that so it's going to be quite a simple build hopefully quite quick I need to mount this on a base paint it up I'll get that done, I'll bring you along, hopefully it'll look good, we shall find out. Right then, I found this angled bit of card, which came off of a build actually for Battle Games of Middle Earth as it happens, and I thought this is going to be a diorama, so I'm going to do it a little bit kind of stylized. So I've stuck down the ruin roughly in the centre, which was a lot of fun, you can see a fair number of uh, clamps going on there. I've just glued that down using PVA and I've clamped it down, it was quite warped from uh, because I haven't really looked after it. Um, I was thinking about embedding it in a slightly different environment, but I think that putting it on this is going to be fine. Um, what I'm going to do now, actually, is save some more of my um, old sprues and create some more rubble. So I'll just cure that off um, and, uh, and, and get that stuck down as well. So next time you see this, um, this will be dried on and there'll be more rubble and what have you to go on. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. As I say, it's going to be a really, really simple build. Um, but I'm just going to go now and save some more and cure it all up. And then when I come back to this tomorrow, I will have everything I need to finish off the rest of the base and the surround. So yeah, good to make a start on this. I thought this was done and I went to put it on the shelf after taking pictures and I realised that it's not done. I need to put a little bit of flocking on this, which is a bit frustrating because I thought it was done, like I say, um, but it just isn't right. It, need, it needs to have a little bit more colour, a little bit more texture on the base, and then it will be finished. So what I'm going to do is make use of my terrain glue there, which is just watered down PVA with a little bit of washing up liquid or dish soap, uh, and actually my shop-bought flock, because I'm just trying to use that up uh, before I make some more of my own. Um, so yeah, so just a little bit of PVA, dab it in place, drop the flock on. It's a technique you've seen from a thousand YouTubers, and uh, for me a thousand times near enough um, so yeah I won't go into big detail but that's that's needs to be done because without this it was just a bit meh didn't jump for me but with this I think it's going to be great so there we are gonna get that done and uh, once it's dried I will put more of the uh, terrain glue on to seal everything into place so um, it's a two-stage process, so it'll probably be done over the next day or so. And then I will get some pictures and uh, finish this build up. And hopefully make use of this on the, on the tabletop. Wouldn't that be awesome? So there we are. Uh, I'll get this done and, uh, yeah, finally finish it. With the most of the terrain done on scenic and done on the model railway I now need to populate it a little bit better I've put some things on obviously I've put some people on but there's quite a lot of places where it would really do with a little bit more life so what we've got here is we've got three packs from Pricer uh, which I bought in Belgium before I did anything when I first got into this crazy idea of uh, when I was working remotely and thought about doing a model railway uh, several years ago now so I've had these for a long time in storage so I'm going to go through these and pick out a couple of miniatures I want to put some dogs running with the um, with the people that are playing with the kites so I've got this which uh, I've had not very long but the thing I'm going to spend the most time on uh, right now actually is going through this pot here now in this pot this is some of the miniatures that I've printed out for myself uh, for use on the model railway and there are some ones that I know I want to make use of on this layout so what I'm going to do is pick out what I want to use get them painted and when they're painted I will show you what they look like and we'll put them in place on the model railway and, and start to bring some real life into it so yeah next step so I wasn't going to show you this but I realized this actually might be quite useful it might um, It'd be quite helpful just to show how I use these templates um, and how I go about making multiple things. So what I've done is I've cut out the, um, the this black thin um, like five mil XPS uh, and I'm now clamped it down to the shelf. Now this is a shelf which the display board will be on as well. So this will also be um, this, the technique I'll use for the display board. Um, what I've got is I've got my template which I showed you earlier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along, I don't know how many I'm gonna to fit on, but I'm basically going to draw around the template so uh, what we've got there is this is the road and this is the banks then I'm going to leave a gap so that I can put another clamp in and I'm going to draw another one so it looks like I might be able to do three which is quite cool so we'll draw those in yeah so I can easily do three 
There we are. So just to make it easier for myself, what I do is I make a mark at where the waste is, which is there and there. And then I'll come along with some more clamps, because you can never have too many clamps, and I'll put a clamp also on where the waste is, which really does help to prevent the warping and make this stay nice and safe and strong. So with that done, what I'll do is I'll come along with a 90 degree uh, and probably should have done this before clamping to be fair, so let's just take those clamps out of the way. <laughs> yes, yes I do make lots of mistakes. So I'll come along with a 90 degree um, and I will draw along the edge of each of these here. Very, very lightly and only go to the end where I put a mark because I don't want this necessarily to be completely straight. I might end up putting a little bit of a curve in, but I will always be the same width at each end, if you see what I mean, that's the idea. The other thing that you can do if you do not want to have them completely straight, say for example on this one where I've got a little bit more space, what I could do is I could come up here and go a little bit off centre and put my mark here, 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 and here, and this will mean that when I'm drawing from this point here to there, there's going to be a little bit of a subtle bend in the road, and that can be quite nice as well. So there's two different ways you can approach this. You can either draw the line straight away across, or you can just go along with your template, put your marks in, and then have a slightly skiffy road. So that's that. And then clamp between each one so that you can keep that bend. You can see it still lifts. So putting a clamp here and here makes a big difference. And then you can work on making the, the road um, and putting all of the things which might potentially cause warping on. Um, and then when you cut it out, um, you can then shave down the edges um, how you wish. But you will have no, I mean, I will probably do the middle of the road, put the banks on and then cut this out and then shave down the banks. But, but with the middle of the road done and dry, it won't warp. Anyway, that's my thinking and that's what I do. Hopefully that's been helpful. Like I said, I wasn't going to do that because I've done it a few times, but I figured it's actually worth repeating it. Um, so yeah, that's how I go about it. I'm now going to do this and I'm going to um, prepare the base for the display board and I'll bring it back when I come to do the next step. So this is the display piece and I've actually managed to fit another road section on the end, which is pretty cool. So what I've gone for is not quite square, but it's going to have the corners cut off here and here, um, and then a relatively straight edge up here. We've got the road coming in and forking, so I have managed to get that kind of crossroadsy, T-junctiony kind of thing in, which I'm quite pleased about. I've made sure that that uh, will marry up and match up with all of my roads, so I can use that on the gaming section. And there's plenty of space, as you can see, for me to place the, um, the monsters um, and also to put any uh, kind of dead bodies or whatever I want to on the, on the board. I've also got these two bits of driftwood. Now, these came from Thassos for the holiday this year, um, and I've been looking for an excuse to use them, and I think that this is my excuse. I'm not going to go too tall on this. I was considering putting a kind of like copse of trees with this tucked in it. I think I've gone off that idea. I want it to be a relatively low piece um, that doesn't really detract from it being a display piece and also makes it quite easy to play. But these will be interested in terms of game setting because obviously you've got some cover or you've got some kind of hard, tough ground. Um, but then you've got the road, which is easy to move around. So it gives an interesting kind of uh, dynamic. It could be a good place for, a, for an ambush or what have you. So, so that's that. The next thing to do is to, um, and I'm probably what I'm going to do is having put a road on this board, I'm probably going to do the other board in the background um, and show all of my techniques just on this. So the next thing to do is to put the bank of the road on. Now on the straight sections, that's really easy. I just get myself another strip of this same material and glue it down. Um, but for the curved section, it's not quite so easy. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is get a small section of the uh, that I'll need to mirror and glue that at each side of the road. So just at the beginning, just at the join. And then in the middle, I will use different t different material, maybe some modeling compound in this case, um, and will then fill in the gaps between the two sections, which is where it needs to match up. And that means that I will be able to match my roads up, but I will not have to try to trace the um, contours of curved bits and get it right and what have you, which is just going to be too much of a difficulty. So I will, I will get that done. The only thing to add at this stage 
is that you do need to have a wire brush if you're working with this shiny stuff. I say it all the time. I don't think it can be repeated too often. This does not glue very well. It will reject PVA glue um, and well, it will appear to stick. Over time it will separate and then your terrain piece will fall apart. So just get a wire brush and anywhere where you're going to be gluing, which is all over this piece as it happens, just come along and scratch it up. And just that will mean that your glue will stick. It's not a very nice sound though, so I won't do it on camera. So that's probably the first thing I'm gonna do, scratch it all up. Then I will glue in two strips here on either side of the road, and I will glue in a small strip at each joining point on these roads. And then when that's done, I'll bring you back and show you the next step. This will probably make you chuckle. I've just watched my own video, which is where I made the original of these uh, roads, which was actually one of the battle games of Middle Earth, as I said. Um, and uh, to remind myself of how I did it, and I did use my polyfiller and my uh, chocolat brown paint. So I have reminded myself. So I'm gonna get that done and I'll bring you along to show you how I do that again, to remind you if you haven't seen that video. But I thought I'd show you just how many clamps are on this section. Um, and I've got even more on the other one, which is on the floor now, but these are all now dried. And um, what I've done is I've done what I said I would do, uh, which is at each of the areas where the road is going to come on to, eat, uh, to this little kind of like Y section, um, I've put a, um, a little tab. And what I'll do now is fill in the road between where I roughly want it to be. And then once I've done that, then I'll probably use some modeling compounds to build up the banks between these two points, having beveled them down slightly so they match. But on this side, you can see I also weighted it down as well. On this side, we have a standard road section. Um, and this is what I'm about to work on now. And I'll bring you along when I've mixed my, um, mixed my, material but you can see that we have two banks here which are nicely stuck down just with pva um, and uh, what i'm now going to do is fill in the middle so i'm going to get that all cleared and tidied my old showing angela <laughs> which is why these are out here so I'll get this all out of the way so it's not going to get into a mess and then i will um, do the mix and once i've got it all mixed and ready i'll show you how i've done that and we will apply it to this and then off camera i'll do the other other sections as i've said so yeah, uh, let's get going. This is quite a fun little thing, watching my own video and then doing this. <laughs> so I've got my mix, uh, which is polyfiller, water, a little bit of uh, washing up liquid or dish soap just to prevent it from going off. And I've also chucked a little bit of PVA in it just to give it a little bit more flexibility. And I'm now going to do what I did not long ago on my previous video, come along with a palette knife and uh, start to uh, spread it out between the two banks like this and then as i'm going what i'll be doing is i'll be scoring in kind of tracks and breaking it up and what have you just to give it a little bit more texture and that's that so i'll do that on this straight section and i will also do the same thing over on the other section here um, around via the um, uh, around between all these these little tabs as I've said um, and then I'll let that to dry overnight or maybe even a bit longer um, this does actually use quite a lot of this material um, so um, yeah just uh, make it look like a like a road and uh, go on with it so I'll get this done uh, and I'll bring you back for the next step when I've got something more to show you um, uh, which might actually be starting to base up the miniatures which I want to do I'm quite looking forward to that really enjoying this build I'm sure you can tell there we are, nearly done that section, so I'll carry on and do all the rest, and I'll be back shortly with another update. So I'm back a little sooner than I thought I'd be. I've done all the straight sections of the roads, I've used up all of the mix that I made to do those, so that did that section there and the other three on the other board. And I did start to do this, but I realised that I really need to do the terrain on the other side of it to make it work better. So I'm going to mix up some modelling compound now, I'm going to shave the, down these edges a little bit and do the rest of the terrain, which will involve the um, little pumpkin garden at the very least being pressed into the modeling compound and then removed because I'll glue that in later. Um, and then also the other two other sections that I've got, which is this little bit of 
these couple of twigs, these couple of uh, bits of uh, driftwood. Uh, so I'll, I'll press them in to make an impression um, and then remove them and let the modeling compound go off. So I'm gonna do that now. I've done it loads of times on, on camera. That is something I'm not gonna film for this. Um, and I'll bring you back when that's all ready and when I've done all of the uh, rest of the mix and we're ready to do the next step. But yeah, so yeah, modeling compound first. Let's get it done. The delivery of fishing and camping people arrived, which is really cool. I'm not going to use all of these on the model railway, or on Rosie's model railway, obviously. As someone commented on the picture on Instagram, it would be a very, very busy fishing lake if I did. But what I could do is I can alternate, I can mix it up, um, and I can pick a couple of the best ones and put them out there. So that's what I'm going to do. So uh, what we have here is we have one from Noch, um, which is really cool. I really like that one because it's got the uh, the, the, the father with their child uh, fishing. And we've got a camping set. That one potentially is going to go on the main rail, uh, main um, layout, uh, not this one, so that might go into storage for the time being. <clears throat> and then I've got a couple, so I've got some canoeists um, and I've also got a family fishing with a little dock, which is going to be really good for putting onto this layout. So probably we're going to use most of this one and this one and leave these two for the future layout. So there we are. I'm really, really pleased that they arrived. They arrived very quickly. They're exactly what I wanted. Um, and um, what I'll do next is get them onto the layout. I've positioned the figures that I want to do on the, on the boating and fishing lake. Uh, the only thing that's not there is the little dog, um, which I need to decide where he's going to go. Um, but yeah, so what we've got is we've got a dude here who's just come in through the gate and he is walking in with his fishing rod over his shoulder and is about to go and have, try and get lucky. Over here, the boat, I've just put the boat on the lake next to the dock, which I really, really like. At the back, we've got a family. Um, if that's going to focus, there we are. So we've got mum and dad, we've got dad, dad and son fishing, and then just behind dad, which is at a shot, which I'll get a shot again in a second, is a little boy, and then there's the little boy's mummy going, well done. And then right at the back, we have mummy, uh, we have a father and son walking back from fishing around the other side of the lake. So it's a really nice little setup, tells a nice story. I'll move the camera now so you can see a little bit better what's happening in this little vignette. So there we are, you can see there's the uh, Father and son on the left, they're fishing with the rod. Um, and then behind is a, uh, someone holding a fish, going, look what I've got. And mummy is going, well done. And isn't that awesome? So there we are. I've not used all the miniatures, obviously. I've kept a few. Uh, there's one, still one actual specific fishing model that I've kept, uh, which I'll put onto the other layout when I get to it. Uh, but I think that's, that's perfect. It's not too much, not too little. What I'll do now is think about how much more dressing of this scene I want to do. Whether I do want to put, uh, as I've said, a little kind of hut or something here. I'm, I'm undecided, I might not, I might not bother. Uh, I might just leave it how it is. I'm actually really liking it. Uh, the good thing is, is that of course, while the um, dock is going to be glued in, I'm leaving all of the boats movable. So Rosie can play with them and she can position them how she wishes. And she already has done quite a lot. Another thing that she did today uh, is um, the, uh, the ice cream van. You can't see, let me lift this up a little bit. There we are, the ice cream van is outside the school. She drove it from by where the um, station is gonna be and she pushed it all the way along here and I held it right over the top of the layout and she pushed it there. And then when we got to the corner of the church, she flicked it <laughs> and it went over there and it parked and she cheered and so did I, it was brilliant. <laughs> so there we are, she is having a lot of fun with it. Right, a little bit of progress. It's slowing down obviously now as the uh, big push has finished. Um, the next thing to do is the station, which is in hand. I keep saying it, but it really is now. I've even sent the pictures over to Quinn. I just need to get the dimensions and then we're gonna start. Um, and then that'll be the last big thing. So yeah, really nice to get these figures on. Um, I've got a load more to paint up, which when they're done, that'll probably be the next thing that I'll bring you along for on this. Uh, we'll be positioning all those other like seated figures and various other bits and pieces that I've done, which are really gonna bring to life the, uh, the scene. So yeah, really cool. And you can see that this has been done. I've put the filler in the middle as well. It's still dry and it's still, uh, still wet, so I can't do this side yet. Uh, but pretty much the other, pieces are ready to work on. So I'm gonna start, uh, cut this out of the um, of its base here. So just cut along and then what I'll do is I'll bevel down each of the sides and I'll do that for the other ones as well. Um, and then put on some sand and uh, paint and then a bit of flock and it's done. However, it's not done because I need to put on my dead people. 
So what I need to do is work out, and this is why I'm doing this clip, because the rest of it's pretty boring, but I need to work out where things are going to go. Uh, I have quite a few miniatures, quite a few dead miniatures. Uh, I have since, uh, I have showed you, I've painted up a few more, um, which are the dwarves. So what I'm probably going to do is put all the dwarves onto one of the uh, lengths of the road, so that that can be like, kind of, that's where the dwarves fell. Um, I've also done the giant, which is standalone. Um, he will not be um, glued on anywhere but uh, he will just be part of scatter terrain, part of the, part of the display. Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do now is work out which of these dead people are going to go in which areas and how I'm going to glue them in. Um, I have realised I could potentially have done this slightly better by actually sticking them down and then putting the, or at least pressing them in while the uh, filler was wet so I had a, so I could potentially put some in the road um, and I may struggle now to actually get them to sit in nicely and not look odd uh, but I'll give it a go. Uh, so yes yeah, so I'll get that done and then when I've finished arranging them and uh, I'm starting to stick them down I'll bring you along and show you what that's like. This has dried down really really nicely so what I'm going to do now is I've got a little bit of modelling compound left over from another project so I'm just going to come along and use it to kind of blend in that edge a bit. So I don't have very much, but I don't need very much. So what I've done is I've once again clamped down the card just so that it doesn't warp, which works really, really well. I may need to clamp it a bit more than I have, but I will do that once I've finished putting all of the compound on because I need to have access. And also I don't know exactly where the compound is going to go just right now. It doesn't need to be too neat because this is designed to be a disaster zone. And I do have my spare bits of old um, supports and what have you and a couple of failed prints that I hadn't yet thrown away. And one that I actually dug out the bin for this because <laughs> I had started to throw it away, uh, which I'm gonna scatter on around the edge as well. So I'll get this done. As you can see, it's not taking very long. I just want to make it a little bit more interesting than just a flat surround to this destroyed building. Um, and I think that when I put all the rest of the stuff on, this will be really, really interesting to look at. Um, but it's not very easy to do if you've got too many clamps in the way. So get this done, put some more clamps on, let this scen scenery dry overnight. And then the next thing will be to start to put on the rest of the kind of like old 3D prints and what have you. So um, I will just bring them into shot now, now I've done that. So there we are, this is the valve as I've said. And then I've got some like uh, miniatures and a bunch of old stuff which I just chucked into the uh, curing machine for a while and left. So I'll let the uh, modelling compound go off. I might clamp it again a few more times just to make sure it really doesn't, doesn't warp because uh, I really don't want it to. Um, I may end up sticking this to another base afterwards anyway to really kill the warp. Uh, but for now, yeah, let that go off overnight and then come back to it tomorrow. So I separated the three straight sections out, as you can see, and beveled the edges. Uh, the one which had a curve in, I realised I'd forgotten to do the actual um, modelling compound. <laughs> so that's currently going off and that'll be, that'll be joining this process um, afterwards. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint on my scenic paint, which is basically brown paint mixed with PVA, water and some washing up liquid or dish soap. And that's going to get painted on along all of the edges. Um, and then what that'll mean is I can then scatter on some sand. Uh, which I've got here, which I've sifted. This is just builder sand, um, and then when that dries, I'll paint the paint the scenic glue over the scenic paint over again, um, and that'll be a really nice brown base for me to put some flock on. So uh, yeah, I'll get that done. Uh, it's something I've done over and over and over again in the on this channel. Um, I just need to give this uh, paint a stir. It's sat for a little bit. So I've not done. I've been doing black and dry brushing recently, but I don't want to stick with this brown paint with sand because it will match the rest of the road sections that I've done. Um, yeah, so um, I'll get that glued, uh, that done now, um, mixed up, get the, uh, the, the, the glue, the paint ready. Um, this is why you put the washing up liquid in it, because this hasn't been touched for weeks and it doesn't even smell slightly. And it would do, trust me, because I did it without paint, without once and I had to throw the whole batch away. It was horrible. Um, so yeah, so I'll, um, I'll get that painted on now and then scatter some sand on, 
paint over the top with the same paint once it's dry. When that goes off, I'll bring it back, show what it looks like, and we'll start doing the positioning of each of these miniatures um, and doing the flocking, and then this section will be done. So I decided to come along and I'm gonna glue the different elements down now. And then once they're dried later on this evening, hopefully, won't take long, I will then put the sand mix on the outside of this one as well, because that can all be drying at the same time and I can then get a crack on. So I'm just gonna use PVA, um, just gonna coat the bottom of each of these things, put a little bit of PVA down in where I put the dent. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because then when I come along and do the sand, I can bed these things in and they will be look like they're part of the scenery rather than sitting on top of the sand, which isn't what I'd want to have. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to do, just a little bit of PVA in these dents that I made earlier um, and here where the actual pumpkin garden's going to go and I'll let that to dry while I go and do some other bits and pieces and then I'll do the sand mix on this as well and then, and then we're really cracking on, then we're really cooking on classical gas as Mark and Lard used to say, uh, anyone that knows that reference leave that in the comment below and you'll get a thousand internet points from me. That dates me probably anyway. There we are, so that all now set up um, and I'll do the sand and the grab and what have you. And then we'll, pretty much everything will be at the same level, which is really cool. For quite a while I've been painting up these two figures just in my uh, off time off of my 20 minutes, not during the 20 minutes mainly. I had a lot of fun doing it. This, um, I'll put the links to the files below. They're both 3D printed models. Um, and uh, I'm now coming to the point where I want to introduce them on, on the uh, videos here because uh, I want to do a nice diorama. And the idea I had with these two was that this one here would be bringing an offering to her goddess who is up here, who is maybe not a goddess, but we'll never know. <laughs> so the idea would be, um, as you can see, I've got a roughly stepped kind of thing. We'll have, we'd have a, a steps going up and this um, goddess is at the top um, and she's at the bottom about to climb up the steps to go and give her offering. So that's the idea. Uh, I've just mocked it up very, very loosely with some blue foam. Um, I'm not totally sure yet on the dimensions and on the actual, um, on the layout and how I'm gonna do the base. Do I have some ideas, obviously? Uh, so um, I just wanted to introduce that and uh, start thinking about it and um, it'll be happening over the next little while. I'm not gonna rush this one. It's just gonna be a display piece. Uh, there may be some other bits and pieces that go on to it. Um, I do have other miniatures that might work, but at the moment I'm thinking that something just that clean and kind of sparse really, really works well. Um, and I may do some um, colonnade along the back maybe, um, and maybe some, um, some other bits and pieces like that, but I don't think I'll have any more miniatures on it. So I'm gonna fiddle around with this a bit more, play around with the arrangement, work out the dimensions and the rough positioning, and then I'll bring you along when I've done that and we're about to start the next step. That was a, a fun little session. So what I've ended up with is this. Uh, so I've cut each of the edges at 45 degrees to match. So you've got little kind of overlaps. And then I've actually decided to go for a central. So the votive will be coming in from this direction and the goddess will be sitting on the top. And that gives a nice scope for some other things maybe to be added later or, or now, whatever, over in this area. But the focus is very much gonna be coming in like this. So what I'm now gonna do is glue each of these sections down just using PVA and just weight it down. Um, so I'll put some PVA glue, PVA and then glue, and then, and then do each of the layers all at once. Um, and then let that with a weight on it overnight to set. Um, and then I'll come on and do the next step, which is gonna be using air dry clay and rollers to do some texture. Uh, so yeah, really, really happy with that layout. I've not yet decided whether I'm going to keep it on, on the MDF board or not. I've just sat it on that for now. Um, I might do, I might not. Um, but for now, I'm just going to glue the, um, the XPS together, the uh, foam together. And I'm not going to glue it to the, to the bottom. Um, and then, yeah, then I can start to do the textures next time I come get some time. Well, there we are. As I say, um, a, bit, a busy week for me, but really pleased with the progress I did manage to make, though most of it was all done in... A, major burst of activity towards the end of the week. Uh, this coming week is going to probably be a bit the same, so we'll see what the vlog's like next week. But I do thank you if you've made it this far. I really do appreciate you watching these. Uh, it's just wonderful to have the numbers I get um, and uh, yeah, and the comments I receive. So as I said in the intro, don't be shy. Do introduce yourself. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And as always, please do stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.